The O3 system from DJI would not be a typical DJI product if it didn't come with some quirks. And one of them is around changing the camera. Because whilst the O3 system does have lots of nice features like built-in image stabilization, that does complicate things when it comes to replacing the camera because it is actually paired to the ear unit. Now, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what the process is to actually replace the camera on the O3 system, as well as perform what DJI call the calibration, which ensures that it will work properly with your ear unit. Before we jump into it though, I just wanna say, if you do find this video interesting, please do make sure you give it a like. If you are new here, I do have a lot of content on the DJI O3 system system and there is a link to a playlist with all of that in the description as well. Now, as I've already mentioned, the O3 system from DJI does have a very nice built-in feature, which is image stabilization, either via the DJI Rocksteady software, or it will also record gyro data from the camera, allowing you to stabilize your footage with the likes of gyro flow. Now, the sensor or the gyro sensor, I should say for this, isn't actually located in the ear unit here itself. It's located in the camera. And as a result of that, DJI seem to have some calibration data that runs between the camera and the ear unit to ensure that it does give the best performance. As a result of this, if you were to damage your O3 camera and replace it, there is a process that you need to follow to ensure that it works properly, and that is called a calibration. Now, this will need to be done every time you change the camera on your ear unit, regardless of if it's a new camera or a used camera, and there are some quirks around that that I'm going to explain in a minute. What you will need to do first though is actually replace the camera itself and I'm going to quickly walk you through doing that in this next bit of the video. Replacing the camera on the O3 system is very straightforward. What we have is two screws, one on each side, so one here and then one over here and then this back cam shell will release and that then will show you the cable attaching to the main camera board inside. Now these screws are very small so you do want to be careful with them when you remove them and you want to make sure that you don't lose them because you are going to need them later and then once they're removed the back shell of the camera will carefully release and then inside you will see the backboard with the wire connection just located there. Now to remove this connector, you simply need to gently pull up from below on the wiring harness. Now, this is similar to the connection that was on the last FPV system. And the best way to do it is sort of put your finger under it like that and gently give a pull, carefully lifting it on either side, and then it will release. The camera module will come free, leaving the connector there like that. Now, it is worth me mentioning at this point, with regards to the O3 system, the only cameras that are compatible are the O3 specific camera. That is the case at the point of me making this video. None of the cameras that were for the original FPV system, whether it be from Cadex or DJI, including the original DJI camera for the FPV system, work with O3. If you're going to need to replace this unit, you're going to have to replace it with one of the original ones. This this is available for between $80 and $120, depending on where you order it. It certainly isn't the cheapest camera in the world, and unfortunately, it isn't one that you can easily repair if you break the lens, because it is a custom lens on this that is fixed to the camera body as well, and it isn't replaceable on its own. So if you were to break that lens, unfortunately, you're going to need to replace the whole module. Refitment is the opposite of taking it off, so we simply then take our cable and fit it onto our new camera. You can replace the camera module either with a brand new one or you could take one off another ear unit if you wanted to as well. The overall process is exactly the same. You simply push the cable in place, gently press down and once that's back in before you put the back shell on i would recommend that where there is this heat compound here you just squeeze it into the sort of edges to make sure that it hasn't spread out too much because that is what actually helps with the camera cooling and that goes to that piece at the back there that you can see sticking through and then all you do once you're ready is then place the shell back over the back and then reinstall the two screws 
At this point, you've done the hardware change, but it's now time to do the calibration. If you were now to power your ear unit on and look through your goggles, you will notice an error message showing in the bottom right hand corner. And under the status, it will tell you that you need to connect your system to Assistant 2 for consumer drones to allow it to perform the calibration. Now, the way this seems to work is there's a file that the system downloads from DJI directly and places it onto your ear unit or camera. My understanding of this situation seems to be that there is a calibration table that DJI must have back at the factory, either the, something they do at the factory that they log or there's a standard set of calibrations that they install but you do need to connect it to Assistant 2 to do that and you would need to do that every time you replace the camera module regardless if it's a new camera module or an existing one every time you put a module on an ear unit it will need to be calibrated to that ear unit as well. The first thing you need to do is download the latest version of Assistant 2 for consumer drones from the DJI website. It is also worth noting that if you have an older version of this, it may not work. So you should go and get the latest version to ensure that the calibration option is available. Once that is done, it is then time to connect your O3 ear unit to your PC via the USB-C port on the side. But there is something a little bit different on this process than there is, say, just updating the firmware. And that that is, you need to make sure that the O3 ear unit is powered when connecting it to Assistant 2 and not just plugged in. One of the big changes actually on O3 was when you wanted to update the firmware on this, you didn't actually need to power the ear unit. You were able to do it without power. However, you must have power for this calibration process. So you're going to need to make sure that you have got it connected to a flight controller or at least a power source to ensure that you're able to power the ear unit and then plug it into your USB-C connection. Once plugged in, you will get one of two things happen. You may get a prompt saying that you need to activate your camera ear unit or it may enter the assistant to and pop up with a prompt saying you need to calibrate. In my experience, it seems to depend on what camera and ear unit you're using. There are times where it will ask you to activate and there are times where it will just connect to assistant to as normal. What I have noticed is regardless of if it's a new or old ear unit, it, if you do swap the camera, there's a good chance it may ask you to actually connect to activate and it may actually fail in doing this. In my own tests, I kept trying this and no matter what I did, it would not activate. However, it didn't actually affect anything I was doing. What I simply did, select activate later, go into assistant 2 and then perform the calibration process. Once the calibration is complete, you will need to actually back out of this screen manually, reboot the ear unit, and then the process is done. If you then connect your goggles back to your ear unit, you will now see that that calibration message is gone and it now should work exactly as it did before. You'll also notice that there are no messages with regards to activation of that ear unit, even though it wouldn't go through in Assistant 2. These ear units and cameras are pre-activated before and I think this is a bug in the DJI system. And even though it isn't activating, there is no effect on the use of this. There are no restrictions and it is something that I've simply ignored. As you've seen, the process is overall fairly simple and for me it worked straight away without any problems at all. Although I have had users reach out to me and say that they have had this calibration fail. All I can suggest if you do get that is you're doing it on a good computer. If it isn't working on one computer, try it on another. There are known issues with the DJI Assistant app and Mac specifically. So if you are trying it on Mac and it doesn't work, try it on a PC and see if it does work. If after trying that and no matter what you do, it still fails, the chances are there's a problem with the camera module and I would suggest trying to replace it with another. I've swapped my camera between multiple ear units here and cameras and I've had no problems with this process at all. Overall, it's a case of connecting it to Assistant 2 but making sure it is powered, then downloading that calibration data from DJI and then allowing it to download onto the ear unit. 
Now, the interesting thing in all of this is the fact that it is having to download that calibration data from DJI. I'd love to know what is actually in that calibration data. Perhaps one day if this system ever gets rooted, we might find out. But here and now, you're simply going to have to do that process to get yourself back up and running. But it isn't particularly difficult, but it is a bit more of a restriction compared to what you would find on any other FPV system. Now, that's it on this one. If you have found this video interesting, please do make sure you give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments section as well. If you've got any questions, please do put them in there and I will try and answer them too. Finally, I just want to say, if you have found this video useful, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content like this on the channel. I would not have been able to buy this DJI O3 system without my Patreon support. And if you'd like to help us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it for me on this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Stay safe and I'll speak to you soon.